And welcome to our Vision Sunday, where we just at the end of this year set a focus for next year, obviously 2024. Yeah, well, somebody's excited anyway. <laughs> Father, we just come before you and we just thank you for your goodness in the land of the living. We thank you that this past year has just had so many great things happening, along with challenges and growth and stretching and other things. And we just ask for open hearts to hear what the Spirit is saying to us together and individually about 2024. And we ask that in all those things, Jesus would be glorified. Amen. I want to just read a, a statement that is part of our vision strategy document of the church that we seek. And this is kind of a set thing. And hopefully you will catch that there are things in this that we are doing or we're growing in and growing towards. So the church that we see is a church that embraces people of all ethnicities, all ages, influencing and reaching our community and beyond with the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. We see a church with multiple campuses across Canberra and next year we'd like to add another service whether it's a separate location or whether it's just another service in this building giving people more choice and allowing for ongoing growth. A church that is vibrant, loving, kind and motivated by God's grace. A church that connects people in a dynamic relationship with Jesus Christ and each other so that the whole church is healthy and growing and full of love. A church full of faith and expectation and fervent in prayer and filled with people devoted to worshipping and serving the Lord Jesus Christ. A church that equips people for life and eternity with relevant biblical teaching. A church that releases people into life-giving ministries and that practices extravagant generosity. That's kind of the big picture vision of what kind of church we are, what kind of church we want to be and what kind of church we want to keep growing into. And our mission statement simply says, growing lives connected to Christ, His cause and community. And a verse that is key to everything we do, and I love to remind people of this because if you don't repeat it, we forget. And again, there's a whole lot of new people who are part of the life of the church. A key verse for how we outwork that is Colossians 1, 28 and 29 where the Apostle Paul gives his version of the Great Commission and how he's implementing the Great Commission to go into all the world and make disciples. He says, so we continue to tell people about Christ. We use all wisdom to counsel every person and teach every person. We're trying to bring everyone before God as people who've grown to be spiritually mature in Christ. And then he says, to do this, I work and struggle with the, using the great strength that Christ gives me. That strength is working in my life. And so from that, there are four things that flow out of that passage of Scripture. We want people to know God. We want people to find freedom. We want people to discover their purpose and for their lives to make a difference. And really, when you look at it, every one of us wants to do that. The moment you come to know God and keep growing in the knowledge of God, then you need to find the freedom because the Bible says Christ has set us free. We need to discover our purpose. Why did God put you on the planet? What are your gifts, your talents, your abilities? And then you want to make a difference in whatever area of life God calls you to serving. Well, the simplest vision, I guess, that flows from my heart in, as I've outlined those things is what Paul says in Ephesians 4, 16, that he, being Jesus, makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps other parts grow. So the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. And as the pastor and along with the team, that's 
kind of the greatest vision. Uh, we can talk about, oh, we want to do this in missions and we want to do this in plants and other service. And those are important aspects of the vision. But at the end of the day, we want to be a healthy church that's growing in Christ, loving each other and making a difference in our world. And I think we do do that and we need to keep growing in that. And so with that in mind, we've got a bit of a highlights package of some of the things that have gone on. And this is just a small section of what has gone on in 2023. So let's go to the screens. Hi, church. As we look forward and pray into what God has in store for us in 2024, it's important to also look back and remember what God has done through each and every one of us this year. It has been an incredible year so far, all centered around the vision of knowing, growing and sowing. We have seen so much extraordinary fruit. So to celebrate, we have put together a brief snapshot of 2023. Let's get into it. We kicked off this year with an incredible youth summer camp with 80 people. Young Rising has also grown, averaging around 70 amazing people every Friday night. Kids Life has gone from strength to strength with an average of 60 plus kids each week in Belconnen and has also launched Kids Life in our city location too. On Sundays, we've seen the Holy Spirit powerfully at work through extended worship, encounter nights, and so many incredibly powerful yet practical sermons. We've hosted a range of amazing conferences and events which have helped turn people's hearts to Jesus and be a safe place to bring friends. Our online location has seen an average of over 100 people tuning in each Sunday with another 400 views each week with our online content developing to equip people wherever they are. Thanks to the amazing Murray Weston and his team, we've witnessed the incredible new stage being built which has included a brand new baptismal pool. It hasn't sat idle either, as we've already had 38 people take the plunge to declare publicly that they are following Jesus. We now have 10 new life groups, taking us up to 41 groups in total. They are made up of 360 different people of wildly different ages, demographics and life stages, growing together in community and connection seven days a week. In creative arts, our 82 strong volunteer team have served faithfully and consistently with an average of 50 people serving each and every Sunday. We've had 30 people decide to follow Jesus, 61 people join a Welcome and Connect event and 82 new people getting involved in a life group for the first time. We've even had 68 people jump in and join a serve team. Life College saw 146 people grow personally and spiritually throughout their six amazing courses this year, with the Freedom Course being one of the standouts. And last but no means least, we get to our amazing care arm, Canberra City Care. It has been such an incredibly tough year for so many in our community, and this has shown with an additional 967 households registering at Canberra City Care and 484 households using their services for the very first time. This has resulted in an average of 400 visits to the food pantry every single week. That's around 80 visits each day. And with each single visit, Canberra City Care has been there helping, serving and even growing the food to help meet their needs. The volunteers and staff truly are God's hand and feet, and we are so proud of them all. Now this is truly only a snapshot of what God has been doing through each and every one of you this year. This doesn't take into account the countless hours of us all spending God's presence and His Word praying and seeking and growing in truth and love. It truly has been a season of knowing, growing and sowing, and we hope that you are encouraged to boldly step in to this new season that God has for us. We can't wait for 2024. Well, that was good. And uh, every 
month we report on what's been accomplished in missions and uh, Pastor Linda will say a little bit more about that in a moment but in our movement at 1,100 churches and growing uh, our church is number three in supporting field workers and yeah and number six I believe in the largest giving to projects and I love to emphasize the field worker not just the projects, the projects are always the exciting, the, oh, but unless you've got a field worker there and our field workers are just amazing, you hear from them regularly. So that's uh, an exciting thing to report. But our, every year we pick a, and pray about it, and then pick a key verse and a theme for 20, for each year, for this year, 20, coming up 2024. And the passage, and it's been confirmed in so many different ways that I won't go into all the detail, but is Joshua 1 and verse 3, where God says to Joshua, stepping into a whole new era, Moses is dead, new leadership is stepping in to lead the people forward under Joshua. He's nervous, he's anxious about all of that. And God says to him, I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised. And so we're going to just declare, like last year was knowing, growing, well this year, knowing, growing, sowing. I'm already in 2024. I don't want to get there too quickly. Um, but a year to step in. A year to step in. To take steps of faith individually together. A year to step in to all that God has for us. Step into His presence. Take a new step of faith. Step into an area of serving. Step into a new faith goal. Step into new generosity. But all of it that as God says, as you step in, I've already given it to you. And it's just stirring up that faith, stirring up that expectation to step into all that God has for us. And I'm going to expand on that just a little bit later in the service. But I want to invite the team up. And we've got Andy from Canberra City Care. Uh, our, our, we structure our team with uh, key areas of emphases. Uh, grow with Danielle looking after the college and all of this. Engage, Linda's very engaging. And then Generations, who's let us down severely, Pastor Rebecca Brown, is just not here this morning. And <laughs> but what a great thing to celebrate with her, the birth of the child. So um, I'm going to invite Randy to come up. And I'm going to take your seat. And you're just going to share a little bit about what you're believing for, expecting in Canberra City Care. Okay. And then Danielle, then Linda, and then we've got Rebecca on video. We knew this could be happening. So. Thanks, Pastor Sean, and thanks, uh, Church. Um, so, yeah, you've sort of seen some of the things uh, we do at Canberra City Care. And um, I'm really... Uh, proud and excited to talk a, a bit about uh, what we hope to be able to achieve. Obviously, we're going to uh, continue to focus on what we're doing really well at the moment and, uh, and, con and continue to improve with that. But there's some exciting new opportunities, some of which we've been uh, touching on, but not, um, I don't think, fully uh, engaged and, and resourced. Um, so we really want to uh, beef up uh, our pastoral uh, care uh, element and uh, uh, community support or support services. So we're looking to form some small teams that can come beside those 400 odd visits that we get uh, the people that come in and, uh, and support them and have conversations. Are many um, you know, struggle to do the basic things. Uh, you know, uh, some many uh, uh, English is their second language. They find it hard to connect with government services, to read notices, etc. We'd love to have a team where we can just come beside, pray with them if they need to, but also provide that practical support. Uh, another small group of us have been. Uh, working and planning around uh, community support more generally and disaster recovery. Um, so we'd really like to beef up a team uh, to do that. There's so many opportunities for us to get out amongst the community at school fates and uh, other community events. Um, but also we're trying to prepare ourselves for if and when things go really bad, badly um, in our region, not just in Canberra, but the local region, whether it be fires or floods, um, that uh, you know, we can go, get out there fairly quickly 
with a barbecue, uh, with uh, clothes and uh, food, etc., and just share that and come beside people. Uh, lastly, and you've probably heard me talk a little bit about this, uh, we have done a little bit of work in getting practical uh, books and clothes um, and other resources to other international communities um, and also Indigenous communities across Australia. So we'd really like to, uh, to have the time and resources and support uh, from you all to do a little bit more of that. Um, so this is, uh, I, I'm outlining these things because that's where we'd like to go, but we can only do it with your support and with you stepping in um, and coming beside us and, become, and coming up beside our community that needs us. So I think it's a great opportunity for our church and for our community to work together. Thank you. So exciting to hear what's going on in Canberra City Care. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Danielle. I'm one of the pastors here at the church. And the areas that I look after is around our next steps and our life college. And it's so great to hear the statistics that Linda mentioned in that uh, uh, film this morning of the people who have stepped into doing something for the first time this year, whether it's doing a course for the first time, joining a life group for the first time, making a, a decision to be um, saved or getting baptised. So I really wanted to celebrate how many people we've seen do that this year and to encourage people, if you know someone who wants to step into something next year or if you want to step into something new next year, we really encourage you to do that. Um, one of the areas that I want to focus on next year is around the better... Um, connecting new people and new believers. And something I heard recently that was really interesting is that the thing that most people find defines for them when a church is friendly is actually not when they get welcomed at the front door or when they're met in the car park. It's actually the first 10 minutes after the service finishes. And I thought that was a real standout thing for me is that what can we do better as a community to make people feel welcome if they come here for the first, second or third time? Because it's not just up to our amazing Next Steps team or welcome team to do that, it's up to us as a community. So next year, one of the things we were uh, focusing on is how we can do that better and keep growing and developing in that area, whether it's through life groups, whether it's what you feel like you can join our Welcome and Next Steps team or um, just be involved every Sunday in saying hi to someone new. It's something we want to focus on and encourage people in next year. Um, the other thing that we want to focus on next year is doing more study series through life groups. So really connecting what Life College does and what life groups do so that it works together because as that verse in Colossians says, we want to peop see people growing to maturity in their faith and whether that's pre-believers to becoming a believer or new believers to growing deeper or people who have been believers for a long time developing and understanding God in a new way. We want to encourage that for everyone. So if you're already in a life group, we'd love to have a conversation with you about what study series you might like to do. If you're not in a group but you'd like to start one, we'd love to hear from you as well because we want to see people growing in their faith and get to the end of 2024 feeling that they know God better, that they've made new connections with people and that they are stronger and deeper in their faith. So please all join us in that. Thank you. Well, good morning. If you're new, my name is Linda. <laughs> And I pastor, have the joy of pastoring with my husband, this wonderful church. For 2024, I'm really excited. We're going to step in with our Sunday service. We want to step in more to putting into practice what the messages are actually preached about. And we can grow in our walk with God. We want to step into being more intentional about hearing from the Holy Spirit and moving in the Holy Spirit, actually stepping out and, and moving, taking that risk. And, you know, I, I think the Holy Spirit's saying, and take that risk and step out to help others to be continue to believe for the miraculous and see breakthrough in people's lives and to step into a greater level of our faith. It's one thing to say it, but I'm talking about actually we're intentional 
intentional about doing it and step into a deeper, de deeper level of engagement in our worship. So we come with not just, oh, well, I've come to church, you know, well, yeah, we'll go through the motions. No, I come with awe and expectation today, God. I want to meet with you. I want to go home. Wow, that service was great. Wow, that was great to be in your presence. And that's intentional. You really have to do that. And also step into more people stepping in our serve teams. And that's so that if we add another service on, we've actually got the teams to be able to do that. And God wants to grow teams. We want to have more locations. We want to have another service. And that we can't do that if everyone's not serving. So if you're not serving in a serve team, mm, got to have a thing. You'll think about that. What are you doing here? Yep. Cool. But we love you anyway. <laughs> Just a little hint there. And next July, we are celebrating 60, not 16, 60 years as a church. They all had different names during the years and we're going to have a wonderful time. It's going to be a special celebration. And so that's next year. When it comes to prayer, we want to be stepping into engaging more in prayer in our personal walk with God, but corporately also, particularly with the Monday night prayer Zooms, and that's only for half an hour on a Monday night, but just getting more involved corporately with prayer. And we step in to be bold enough to ask people, you know, could I pray for you? There's something regularly Sean does. He asks people two things. What is your dream? And most of them just say, no one's ever asked me that. And the second thing is, just before he leaves, if I could pray one thing for you, what would it be? And most people never knock him back saying that. So just stepping out and asking people to step in and pray. When it comes to life missions, uh, we accidentally missed it on the video, but the team went over to uh, Vietnam this year and it just opened their whole world vision. And it was a great opportunity. There were children that went also. And just for them to see what God was doing overseas and what some of our field workers are doing. And it was just wonderful. So this coming year, we've got stepping into being open to be part of a mission team, perhaps you've never done that, being part of one that's going to the field areas and attending our afterwards, straight after it, our International Missions Conference in Pana Asia. And that's all happening around the end of July, beginning of August. Also to be able to broaden our horizons to care for people in a culture that you don't know about. For our life women and for our life men, we just want to continue to see everyone coming alongside each other, making people feel like they belong and just helping them grow in their walk with God and grow in their relationships in our church family. Our life men have their great stand conference that's coming up in March next year and life women have their Wise Up Women's Conference coming in September and this year's Wise Up is celebrating 20 years. So again, it's a big year next year, but we want to continue. And then people will enjoy coming to those events but feel it's a place that they can be connected and come alongside. Now, Creative Arts isn't here today because Pastor Brian is at our city location. So he's asked me to just share these quick few things. He wants us to step into spaces for praise and worship in our services to be a space where people can come into his presence, encounter full expression through the leading of the Holy Spirit, composing new songs, prophetic words, worship. He wants to see that happening. Also step into, our, into a community and opportunity Bring his presence via worship gatherings in the spaces such as life groups, generational events, life women, life men, Eastern Christmas celebrations, the engage in a wider opportunities, including ACC events, our Youth Alive, National Prayer Breakfast. There's so many opportunities and he wants to see that happening in the year ahead. And also step into purpose and calling, helping individuals to step to, on team to step into and discover their purpose through regular work, sorry, through regular regular workshops and gatherings throughout the year with a focus on discipleship and bringing up the next generation. So that's just a quick snapshot, but we're in for a great year. And I know as we intentionally move with the Holy Spirit, He's going to do amazing things through us. Thank you. Yeah. We're going to go to the screen now and hear from Pastor Rebecca Proud. Hi church, what an incredible day it is today, Vision Sunday. As we step into 2024, there are so many exciting things on the horizon, but I just wanted to take a moment to share one significant change in particular that is happening within generations. 
As many of you know, we currently have a young adults ministry for ages 18 to 25 and a ministry called The Collective for ages 26 to 40. These ministries have served us so well over the years and have been a vital part of our church. However, we as a leadership team believe that the Spirit of God has been speaking and leading us into something new. And so for Generations 2024, we will be moving from a model that is ministry-based, which in the past has had a large focus on events, to a model that is community-based, focusing solely on discipleship. What will this look like for generations? Well, post high school, there will be three distinct communities, study life, work life, and family life. These communities will be entirely based on life groups, allowing us as a church to go even deeper into discipleship. All you need to do is simply find your fit. Are you a student? Are you attending a university or TAFE? Maybe our study life community is for you. Are you focusing on your career? Are you a young professional or working in some capacity? Maybe you're newly married or starting a family, then work life or family life could be your community. Now, of course, there will be socials amongst the communities and combined gatherings throughout the year for that injection of faith but our primary focus for 2024 will be discipleship, the spiritual growth and conviction of this generation. And I believe that Life Groups is the very instrument in which we will see this come about. You will hear further details over the coming months as we launch this model early next year. But please hear me when I say this. I know this is a big change and it's new territory for us as a church. We've never been this way before but I have such an excitement in my spirit for all that is to come, for these communities truly are and will be the pioneers and leaders of tomorrow. Very good. Yeah, we're really excited about the step into communities and uh, just seeing how that works out and how people engage in uh, study life, work life, or family life, and then continue to grow our life groups in across all the other age groups as well. I just want to also give a special shout out to Pastor Danny and Sky Gwyn, who lead our youth. Um, and they saw just uh, a growth this year that's been quite phenomenal to where now uh, last, or the week before last, there were 80 young people, um, youth, Remember those? Uh, in youth. And it was a high point, but it's been sitting around 65, 70 and continued to grow and engage. And they've taken it from uh, an amazing point and keep uh, building on what was there before and growing it. But just as we wrap this up, I want to just give a few thoughts around the theme of a year to step in. God's promise to the Joshua generation and to Joshua himself. I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised. I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised. And I believe God wants us to step in. We've been through all the COVID thing and the recovery year and this last year has been a wonderful year in seeing new things and growth in just about every single area of the life of the church. But this is, I think, another point of engagement of us just stepping up so we can step into all that God has for us. A conscious thing, as Pastor Brian talked about, or through Linda, of stepping into God's presence in a fresh way, new expectation, new worship, to step into increased prayer, to look for the new opportunities like Randy was talking about, of how we can better serve our community. Already a significant footprint in the care network in Canberra, but just adding new things to it that engage with people's hearts, not just their physical needs. To be a year that we step into acts of faith, whether it's been stirred up about our generosity, and I'm not just talking about financial generosity, but the giving of ourselves in serving others. 
perhaps stepping up to go on that field trip on missions and whether it's Cambodia or Vietnam or Thailand, seeing some of the incredible work that's been done there to make a difference in people's lives. And God's not just looking for strategy. Strategy is important. I'm not in any way minimizing that. But God always works through people. When David brought the ark back, he initially did it in the same way as the Philistines did. Put it on a new cart, some oxen that had never been used before, and it was a train wreck. Well, a cart wreck. <laughs> There weren't trains, but you get my point. <laughs> and then after waiting for a while, he realized that God's presence is carried by people, not by things. The strategies are important. The planning is important. The buildings are important. But most important from the heart of God is people carrying the presence of God. And you see that in the book of Joshua. That in Joshua 3 verse 13, as they are going to enter into the promised land, where they're going to put their feet and they're going to be, they're going to be battles. Jericho's waiting for them. The other cities that have to be conquered are waiting for them in the promised land. But as soon as the priests who carry the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, set foot into the Jordan, the minute the priests who carry the presence in symbolizing the ark of God, the minute their foot touches, the waters of the Jordan will part. And it's a whole different way of doing things. When Moses took them out of Egypt, it was stand still and see the salvation of your God. Now it's step in and see what God would do. Step in by faith. Step in. And those priests must have been nervous carrying the Ark of the Covenant and they put their foot there and suddenly the waters part. And it was in flood time, this enormous miracle. And as they stand in the middle of the Jordan, it dried up in that moment, the whole nation enters into new promise, new opportunity. As soon as the priests who carry the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, set foot in the Jordan, its waters flowing downstream will be cut off and stand up in a heap. A way will be made. As well as praying around this and researching it and just reflecting on how to communicate it, I stumbled across the fact that as of the 15th of September this year is the Jewish New Year. That's the way the Jewish calendar works. And it's the year in their Jewish calendar, 5,784. And Jewish numbers carry significance in representing words. And I'm not gonna try and unpack it because I can't do it as well as the Christian rabbi who did it when I listened to them. But literally, this year, starting in September, and we've stepping into it, is the year of open doors. And I thought, how incredible. Is God just confirming something? Time to step in because he's gonna open doors. It's the year of open doors. It's also worth noting in the Jewish calendar that we're in a decade of the mouth, of declaration, of declaring things. And the word mouth, the way the, it's represented in the Jewish number and then the words that follow, it's your word, your confession, your declaration. And to fully realize all that God has for you, has for us in 2024, we need to see it as this year of open doors where God says, I want you to step through. I want you to step into that new place, that new area of faith, that new sense of my presence. And that we need to declare things that are consistent with that. In the book of Job 22 verse 28, it says you shall decide and decree a thing or declare a thing and it will be established for you. And the light of God's favor will shine on your ways. Oh, you notice that connection between deciding something, declaring something and something being established. The only thing that I would add to that is you first got to discover God's word, God's will for you for 2024. What is God saying to you? And when you get what he's saying to you, then decide, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it and then declare it. And then there needs to be the action of stepping in to all that God has for you. 
It's time to discover God's will, to claim God's promises, and by faith to step into all that he has for you by discovering his will, deciding to do it and declaring the promises of God into the situation. And it's not about how strong or capable you feel. It's about God's presence, God's promise, and God's purpose. Wherever you put your foot, I've already given to it to you. When you get that odd, now they didn't just march into any land. He gave them a land when there were boundaries. And he said, when you step into that area of my purpose, it's already done. It's established. Yeah, there will be battles. There will be Jerichos. There will be points of conflict. But as you discover God's strategy in that, Jericho falls. The promised land opens up before you. The year of open doors, time to step into things, to step in. And Jesus reveals himself as the keeper of keys and doors. We often look at situations and we all do it in different ways and subtly begin to think, my future is connected to that person or to that decision at work or to that. And God does use people in our world, but they don't hold the key to the door that God wants to open for you so you can step into it. Jesus holds the key. He's the keeper of keys and doors. He has the key to unlock and open the door for you and for your situation. In the book of Revelation, as he reveals himself to one of the churches, and says, these are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the keys of David. And what he opens, no one can shut. And what he shuts, no one can open. And then as a point of encouragement, he says to the church, I know your deeds. See, I've placed before you an open door that no one can shut. And I know that you only have a little strength, but you've kept my word and have not denied my name. And the reason I'm just reminding you of that, it's not based on how strong we feel. It's based on what door has he opened. He says, I, I know you've had some struggles. I know you don't feel particularly strong, but it's not your strength. It's my strength. It's the door that I'm opening. And so I want us to engage in faith, in expectation, individually in your own life and circumstances. But for us to together, what are the open doors that we need to step into? Because Jesus has opened the door. It won't be without challenges. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 16, 9, a great and effective door has opened to me and there are many adversaries. We're not expecting to just cruise through it. I'm not prophesying bad things. I'm just saying life is life. Challenges will be there. But God says, I've opened the door. And Paul says, I can see this open door. For him, it was to proclaim the gospel in new areas, new territories. And we need to... Make a decision, and I'm calling us to it today, to trust God that he is the author of our tomorrow, that he is the one that holds the key to open doors. But we've got to step into it. We trust him, but then he looks for an action. He wants us out of that trust, out of that faith, to step in to all that God has for us. Just as you take a moment to reflect on that, begin to make a decision about it. The team's got something to minister over your lives, over our lives. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. He's been my fourth man in the fire, time after time. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood.
So I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. I trust in God, my Savior. In your presence, your spirit speaking to our hearts about steps of faith, things that in 2024 we need to step into. And Lord, this is just the beginning of the conversation with you about what we step into. We ask that you continue to speak individually, together. And we say, speak, Lord, your servants are listening. And we thank you that we can put our trust in you. The most important area of trust is to trust God for your eternal destiny, for your salvation. And it's not about working for something. You, can, you and I can never be good enough to be good enough for God. And He knows that. And He loves us anyway. 
He loves us so much that He sent His Son to die for us, who paid the price for all our sin, for all our brokenness. And so that salvation is not about earning anything, trying to balance some kind of invisible, eternal scale of enough good versus the bad. That's not what the Gospel is. The good news, the Gospel, which means good news, is that Jesus did it all. And when you put your trust in Him, He gives you the gift of salvation. He makes us right with our Heavenly Father. He loves you as you are, but He wants to invite you to be in a relationship. The book of Revelation, there's this incredible picture. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in. And that is a promise that is bigger than this salvation moment, but it's specific to it. But here's the amazing thing. Only you can open the door of your heart. He will not barge in. He will not kick it down. He knocks and he says, can I come in? Will you invite me into your life?